Team World, today I'm going to show you how to recover an Apertus etching that had that had been interrupted uh, from either a bug within Apertus or potentially an issue with the blockchain uh, that you were attempting to etch on. Uh, and if you uh, begin using Apertus, remember Apertus is still beta software uh, and uh, you're going to run into some issues. And especially if you're, if you're etching uh, quite a bit of data uh, you know, you're going to run into more issues than if you're just etching smaller uh, files. Uh, because the, uh, the blockchains that you're etching on aren't particularly designed to actually do what Apertus is asking them to do. So there is code within Apertus to try to, try to kind of get around that and, and limit and slow down uh, some of the stuff that, uh, uh, some of the steps in order to allow the blockchains to catch up. Some blockchains uh, still can't quite handle the data. And uh, so one of the one of the symptoms of that is a blockchain uh, can during the middle of a, of an etching it can lock up and it can ref refuse to give you uh, a portion of the uh, 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 basically a transaction ID back from one of the segments of data that you're etching. And when that happens, currently the code just ceases to run. It just kind of locks up and and uh, it'll throw an error message uh, and it'll just kind of reject the whole etching. Uh, so that means if you were in the middle of the etching, uh, you will uh, it, it will appear to be to look like you have lost it all. And if you were imagine if you were if you were etching one Bitcoin worth of data and it got to half way done and then it ended, you would be able, you would feel that you have just lost five hundred dollars and you have to start again. <laughs> so I wanted to show you uh, people how you can recover uh, something that has. Uh, kind of puked out in the middle. So this that's what this uh, training video will demonstrate. Okay, so uh, to do that, we're actually gonna recover the Mazacoin blockchain, uh, the Mazacoin etching that I had attempted earlier. So first of all, uh, we will uh, do a little troubleshooting to see what happened. Uh, so we'll look at the uh, uh, Pertis and it just looks empty. Uh, normally, uh, I would create uh, an etching and I would uh, I would start an etching and, and I would go to work and when I would come back home uh, it would be you know all completed but uh, for this one I came back home and it looked some similar to this it just kind of looked like nothing happened <laughs> so I want I want to go look and see what happened uh, so I'm gonna go look at my transact transactions uh, then I'll notice that okay I have some transactions in here that don't appear to have gone uh, that are unconfirmed uh, and that can happen. Uh, not exactly sure why that happens, uh, but it, it happens periodically. Uh, and I think it's because we, again, uh, putting too much data and it can't quite uh, handle it. So I want to scroll down until I find the first or the last transaction uh, that was sent successfully, uh, because that was the, that's the one that uh, I don't want to repeat this transaction because it's our, it, you know it it went through and it's already been uh, given 1,080 confirmations. So we'll find, uh, we're gonna wanna look for this transaction ID. So we'll grab it. And we're gonna keep this window open so I can show you how these addresses line up uh, in, in the past. So we'll just kind of expand this out. So we'll notice, uh, so this one went through, uh, the one above it, uh, again, you saw it had issue. It uh, just said unconfirmed uh, and, and it's, been a, a several days it's the eighth today and and this this happened on the sixth and so it, it certainly uh, has had time to do that uh, I have also restarted the wallet and it still kind of stays in that state so these, these ones potentially might someday go through but since I'm uh, impatient and I want uh, to continue this etching so I can uh, have the full file uh, be distributed uh, I'm going to start it over. So again, we'll uh, go to the last one that worked, grab its transaction ID, and this is where we're going to uh, do some browsing. So you want to browse to the folder that you have a Pertis running in. And right now, since I'm running a Pertis uh, from within Visual Studio, I actually have to browse out kind of far out here into a folder. Uh, 
Okay, so within the folder that Apertus is running from, you'll see that the Apertus exe is there. Uh, but Apertus also creates a root and a process folder. And the folder, uh, the root folder is actually the, the cache, the index of everything that's uh, been found. Uh, and it creates it uh, into a web browsable uh, root. So that's what the root folder, folder is. The process folder is uh, files that are created uh, during the etching process. And these are the files that we can use to recreate a uh, kind of a, a failed uh, etching. So we'll want to go out to this process, uh, to this folder and kind of do a sort to try to find the newest date modified files. Uh, and you'll see that there are a series of ledger.lgr and address.add files. Uh, so the .add file is actually uh, the, the full, uh, all the addresses that are associated uh, to store, that are created to store the data of the actual uh, etching within, within the blockchain. And if we jump back over here to your transaction details, you can see that uh, you've got a transaction ID, but you can see here's all the addresses kind of associated with that transaction ID. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to the last address on this file. Uh, we're gonna copy it into memory. We're gonna come out to this address file, and again, uh, this was the last. This was the newest file. Uh, you know, these were the newest created uh, files, and really, that's you know, you're gonna have to use the date stamps because these uh, the names here are generated randomly each time. So really, the date stamps are gonna be your best. Uh, a way to figure out which are the which are the files to be to be using. Uh, so we're going to open up this ADD file, and we're going to find that last address that was in the last transaction that was good. We'll find it on this list. Okay, and we'll want to make sure that there is only one of these addresses. Uh, if there are more than one address, then we might need to. Uh, We'll, we want to, we'll want to look more closely at this transaction ID to see what surrounds to see what addresses are actually surround this last transaction ID, like what's above it. Uh, because what we're trying to do is we, we're trying to make sure we're trying to find the exact position in this .add file that the etching process uh, uh, failed, because a Pertis uh, uh, basically creates this ADD file first uh, and then the software opens it up and then it, it, it moves down it line by line uh, and etches every one of these addresses in order and creates transactions uh, out of them. So we are going to go into this file to see where it stopped. Uh, we're, going to re we're going to delete all of the addresses above from where it stopped and then we're just going to re-etch this file. It's right here, uh, and then Apertus will see that and it'll be smart enough to, to restart the process. Uh, it won't actually just etch this ADD file. It'll see that it's an ADD file and it will continue from where it ended and kind of be begin again. So in order to get it to continue from the right spot, we, we want to find the last transaction ID that actually was successful. And we also want to find the last the, the space in the file here uh, that we can uh, delete data from. All right, so let's hold these two together. So we did a search for this here, and we found it right here. Uh, and you'll notice if you look at the one up next to it, above it, MC148, you can see that's this one. Uh, MMVBG, you can see that's this one. So you can see that it all kind of uh, goes uh, from the top down. So we're going to grab this last one that was put in. And then from there, we're going to do Control Home or Control Shift Home. And that will uh, select everything uh, from that point up. And then we're going to delete it out. And then we're going to hit delete one more time. Uh, to delete the top line, and then let's just make sure M8 
Yep, we took out that ML. No longer there. Cool. Close that. And then we'll just save this. File, save. Okay, now the next step is we want to open up the ledger file. Uh, and the ledger file will have exactly the same name as the address file, except it'll have a different extension. So let's open that up. And you can see that the ledger file has, has created a few transaction IDs. So we want to make sure that that transaction ID uh, are the ones that failed. If they do still show up in here, we want to remove any of the ones above that failed if they are in this list. But first of all, let's, let's find again this one, that uh, the last one that was good. Right click on that, show transaction ID. Uh, so that's 440E. Okay. So, uh, well, I'm, don't, I'm not going to search since this is such a small file. Oh, and look at that's funny. <laughs> the ones that we just deleted actually just went through. Let's see. So that means uh, we can. So that means uh, that we have another, a couple more, at least one more transaction ID, maybe more that uh, from this file that we can keep and we don't have to re uh, re enter. So that means uh, that there's going to be more that we can delete. Yes, yes, good. So I don't have to do anything different to that file. <laughs> okay, so let's go back over here and see what new uh, data just came in. Close this. Cool. Let's go up. So that one is uh, now uh, more data that we can delete out of this file that doesn't does not have to be re-etched. Oh, did it get it got them all? Uh, so let's go to the top. Uh, there was one that was still, I believe, unconfirmed. C5 D359 376 Let's make sure this one doesn't this one still exists. Okay, we can do that by going to this. Okay. Right there. This one underneath. Okay, that's that one. Just making sure none of these. Some of these, uh, sometimes these transaction IDs can get out of order. So I'm just kind of verifying that all the transaction IDs that I have on this list are represented low. Looks like that one is. And this one, 9195, that one's this one. I am not seeing this 376, and that could be a problem. Uh, one thing that we can do is, uh, try and find a, blockchain explorer and if the transaction ID shows up in a blockchain explorer Okay, good, I'm glad I looked. So that means this particular one, out of order, did not go through. And it is possible, 
it would be possible to recover this uh, without losing any data, but for the simplicity of this video, I am going to just, uh, we're basically gonna have to start, uh, we're gonna have to uh, go back to the last one that was known good before this, uh, 440AE. We're gonna have to find the data from that transaction and start from there, uh, unfortunately. Go a little bit further up. Sorry for all the waiting on this. It's probably not kind of boring to watch me do this. Three, seven, six. Ah, well, well, there it is. Drop confirmations. Okay, well, it's all there. <laughs> that was what I was looking for. It must, uh, the blockchain explorer on that other site just must not be updated yet. Okay. Verify this one. C59, okay. So we're going to do the process that we had done before, but now we're gonna find a new number, which is further down the list than it was before, meaning less uh, data we have to re-etch. We'll find next. Yes. Fish. Shift, control, home, delete, delete. Okay. And hopefully that makes sense. So uh, basically we are just kind of uh, going to restart the process. So once this starts back up again, uh, Apertus will recognize that I have launched uh, that I'm trying to etch an ADD file, uh, it will uh, begin, it'll open up that ADD file. Uh, it it'll open up that ADD file and it'll start from the top and then it'll just begin uh, etching these, uh, all of these down uh, until it's completed. Uh, and every time uh, it has to create a new transaction, so for instance, uh, Apertus uses the send uh, send many command to uh, send you know up to 300 or more uh, addresses at a time in each transaction, uh, but uh, a transaction cannot have du uh, cannot send money to the uh, to the same address twice. So if you have duplicated data in your transaction, uh, Apertus has to break up the transaction uh, and send it uh, to that duplicated address individually on a separate transaction. Uh, each time. Uh, so that can uh, create the necessity to have multiple transactions. Uh, and also, you could uh, potentially be uh, creating a transaction from different uh, uh, wallets, different money sources, uh, different ways that you could be building that transaction. Uh, and so what happens is that Apertus creates a ledger, a ledger file as well. And the ledger file is basically just a listing of all of the transactions uh, that were that are, that were necess necessary in order to actually build uh, the address file, and it's again this is also in in the order, uh, in in basically the same order as this uh, was created in. So at the, the very end process is a Pertis sees this ledger file uh, and then it picks it up, and if this ledger file has more than one uh, transaction ID in it. Uh, then it will basically etch this ledger file as a file on top of the blockchain. Uh, and then it'll keep doing that until it can etch the ledger file uh, in a single transaction ID. And once it can do that, the end process is a single transaction ID uh, that can be used to rebuild uh, the entire uh, file uh, from transaction IDs that could exist all over the blockchain uh, from different areas. Uh, and that could have uh, st been started, or transaction IDs that consist of data that, uh, you know, that is, that is old, that's already out there. So newer 
transactions can 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 basically encapsulate data that's already on a blockchain by uh, basically referencing its transaction inside a ledger file or within a link file, uh, which is kind of what the link feature does as well. Okay, so once I start this up, Apertus is going to see the ADD file. It's going to start uh, etching it, and it's also going to start writing transaction IDs again into this file. Uh, and once it's completed, completely completed etching all of these addresses uh, and adding transaction IDs into this file, it's going to build this file and it's going to continue until it's done. Okay, I told you that how, how it works three times in a row. <laughs> so uh, we'll just uh, do it here now. And actually, yes, here we go. So, attach, I'm going to browse out to where that was. And here we are. And I'm going to hit open and I'm going to hit etch. And then it should just continue again. Uh, and any of the keywords, uh, the, the signature, and all that stuff uh, will be kind of uh, restarted uh, once this begins. One uh, thing I should mention though is if you have uh, signed it, uh, then before you restart this process, you'll want to again uh, select your profile and signature from this box before you restart it as well, because Apertus will uh, will need to come back in here and grab that. Uh, you do not need to re-add message information or uh, the uh, keywords and things like that. That will have gone through. Uh, what you do need to uh, have associated again, if you restart it, is if you had a profile and a signature or a vault, you'll have to reselect these again from the boxes before you restart the process. Okay, just wanna throw that in there. Okay, so we'll attach an etch, it's gonna warn, prompt, and we will begin. And now this process, since it still it was, you know, over uh, 600K worth of data, is, gonna, is still going to take probably, uh, you know, several hours to complete. So I'm not going to let you, uh, or make you sit here and watch that. <laughs> I've already uh, made you, uh, spend a lot of time as I worked through this process. And I hope uh, what I just showed you here kind of gives you an idea of, of how you might do it yourself uh, if uh, you run into a similar issue with a corrupted transaction. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to, uh, if, you, if, if you ever are etching something uh, and it's highly valuable to you, uh, I, I'm happy to, to help you out, uh, to help you kind of push through, so, through any bugs you might find. And if you're a developer, please uh, consider uh, helping with the project and making this all a little bit smoother. Uh, there's uh, some, uh, some really cool ways that we could be doing this uh, better in the future, and uh, we would love your help to help us get there. All right, thanks very much for your time, and have a great day.